يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الحمام ولا يناله غوص الفتن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا عجل ممدود وترى الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان ارضي والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم صل على والصلاه والسلام على اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعن الله على اعدائهم اجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we are gathered here once again to take some lesson from the ahlul bayt alayhim assalam and alhamdulillah today we recited a few verses of the quran and one of the verse has attracted my attention because it is part of the subject that we are discussing during these discussions and this aya as we can see on the board says as for those who believe and their offspring follow them in faith we will unite with them their offspring and we will not diminish can you take the clock please and we will not diminish to them anything of their work every man is responsible for what he shall have wrought now this is a very important aspect what this ayah of the quran alludes us to at least apparently is that it is up to us on how we raise our family and what we shall sow in this world in regards to our family our children so shall we reap in this world as well as the akhirah because allah promises that he will unite us with our offspring we all know that on the day of qiyamah it is a day when mother will run away from her daughter and father will not want to see his son but allah promises that if you raise your family in such a manner that they are followers of faith and practicing muslims then allah will unite you back with your offspring because the love of our children and our family is so heavy in our hearts that when our children go away from us we feel pain but on that day of qiyamah if we are not of the same faith the children and the parents or the parents have not done enough let's put it that way they have not done enough for their children to follow them in faith then that day will be even tougher when you will see your child turning his face away from you so our discussion that we have been having is the wasiya of amir al mu'minin imam ali ibn abi talib salawatullah wa salamu alayk which he has written in a form of a will after the battle of sifin and we have been discussing this for quite some time now however it is very important that this document this document which is the commandment number 31 of uh, nahjul balagha 
should be read by everyone, each one of us, because it has so many subjects that Imam has explained to us on our responsibilities in life towards our families and what must we do, how must we train our children, how must we prepare them for the life of this world as well as the life of the hereafter. Now, continuing from where we left last time, Imam says, after having says that what I love for you, Imam tells his children, what I love for you is to adopt from my will is to fear Allah, ittaqullah, ittaqullah. Imam has mentioned taqwa, all the Imams of Ahlul Bayt have mentioned taqwa so many times in their admonitions, similar to as many times the way the Qur'an has emphasized it, taqullah. Fear Allah, be conscious of Allah, keep away from everything that Allah dislikes. Bottom line. Having said that, Imam is now explaining to his children, and we are his children, like we said last time also and previously also, that Rasulullah said, Ana wa Aliyun al Ummah. I and Ali are the fathers of this Ummah. So we are the children of Amir al Mu'minin and the Imams and the Rasul and Rasulullah himself as well. In that perspective, we may not be biologically their children. We may not be biologically their descendants by not being Sadat. That is why. But as an Ummah, we are still of the children of Rasulullah and Amir al Mu'minin, alayhi salatu was salam. Then Imam says that he has, Allah has made obligatory on you to follow the actions of your forefathers and the virtuous people of your house. This is a qualified statement. It is not to follow the household or people of the, the forefathers just blindly. It is only those who are virtuous, only those who are on the path of La ilaha illallah. So you follow them and then Imam says that because they did not fall short in seeing for themselves what you will see for yourself. Here Amir al-Mu'mineen is telling us and establishing a fact that the world is moving in the same way and in the same manner what our forefathers have experienced in terms of faith and life, we shall too experience the same things. We may have gadgets now that our forefathers could not even dream. Fifty years ago, if you would tell somebody that I am putting up some characters on my phone here and somebody 10,000 miles away is reading at the same time, if those forefathers of ours were to be brought back from the graves, they would tell us, you have brought us into another world. We may have changed the gadgets. We may have made things easier in terms of communication, in terms of entertainment, in terms of many other aspects of life. But life itself has not changed. Man needs to sleep to rest. Man needs to eat to get energy. Man needs to remove the dirt from his system every day and uh, periodically to clear himself. That has never changed. The modes of experiencing those things have changed with time. But the system of mankind has never changed and it shall never change till the day of time. Yes, People in the yester years, thousand years, ten thousand years ago used to look for a corner in the forest to relieve themselves 
and today we have ceramic and 